All right, here we go on a video about arcs and chords. Um, arcs, it's basically a piece of a circle. So for example, if we just drew a curve from A to B, that's called an arc. And the sum of all the arcs of a circle will be 360 degrees. Um, but AB is an example of what we would call a minor arc. It's an arc that's less than 180 degrees. Um, so we would just say that this is AB. And when we name a minor arc, it's just two letters. It's a starting point of the arc and an ending point of the arc. A major arc is an arc that's greater than 180 degrees. Now, AB, we could turn that into a major arc, um, and we can just go the long way around the circle. So we could just go this way, pass through D, pass through C, and go all the way to B. That is another way we can get from A to B, but we took the long way around, which is called a major arc. So that would be, say, A, D, B. So the difference between a minor arc and a major arc is a minor arc is only named with two letters because it's the shortest possible way to get from A to B. If we're going to take the long way, we have to put a letter that we have to hit on its way from A to B. So we could have also called that ACB. That's the exact same arc. ADB and ACB are the exact same thing. We're starting at A, we're finishing at B, but we're passing D along the way. A semicircle is just half a circle. It is a 180 degree arc. So we have to give three letters again so we know which half we're talking about. So if we wanted to name the left half, we would call that ADC. Um, if we wanted the right half, we would call it ABC. Okay, so again, three letters so we know which side we're talking about. A central angle would be this angle here in the middle, so that 50 degree mark. So if we had this called X, that would be angle AXB, or we would have BXC, or even AXC. Any angle in the middle with its vertex at the center is called a central angle. Now, the cool thing about that is a central angle is always equal to the arc. So angle AXB is equal to the measure of arc AB. They're going to be equal. So we know that AB is going to be 50 degrees. So inside here, when we're going to find all these arcs, the only thing you really need are all the central angles. So we know straight lines are 180. We also know that semicircles or a half a circle is 180. So if this is 50 degrees, that's going to be 130. And of course, we know that a half a circle is going to be 180 degrees. Just by doing that little bit of work before you answer all these is just going to save you time. So we know that the measure of AB AB is this arc, so we're going to have 50 degrees. BC is 130 degrees. ABC, so starting at A, passing B, and ending at C, we can see that that's half a circle. So that's 180 degrees. BCA, so we're starting at B, passing through C, and finishing all the way at A. So we're going to go 130 degrees for this and another 180 degrees. So that's going to give us 310 degrees. All we had to do is 180 plus 130. And that's it for central angles with arcs. So now we have a problem for you to work on. Um, I gave you one angle, but all of that can be found with 180 degrees and stuff like that. So why don't you first um, pause the video and find all of your central angles that are needed to do the problem. And then see if you can answer the measure of all of those arcs. As soon as you're ready, click play, and we'll go through it. So the first thing you should do is find the measure of all the central angles on the inside. We know that this is 90. That was given. We know that this is a straight line. So if this is 60, then this has to be 120. We know vertical angles are congruent from back in the day. So this guy is also 60. And the last piece would be if this is 180 degrees and this is 90 and that's 60, that means you're missing 30 degrees. So now that you have all the necessary information, let's find all of our arcs. So AB, you should have had 60 degrees. DC should be 30 degrees. AE is 120. CEA would be 30 
60 and 120. So that's going to give you 210. And A, B, D, starting at A, hitting B, going all the way to D, would be 180 degrees because it's half a circle, because A, D is a diameter. And if you got all that, you're good to go. Moving on. Two chords. If you have two different chords in a circle, but they are congruent, then the arcs that are formed by those chords will also be congruent. And the other thing is, if a radius is perpendicular to a chord, it's going to bisect the chord and the arc. So those are two different properties we're going to work with now. So, right here, this is a simple example of me telling you that these two chords are congruent. So if the chords are congruent, then that means the arcs are also going to be congruent. Now, an arc is not equal to a chord. Don't be confused about that. It just means that if these two chords are congruent, these two arcs are congruent. This arc is not equal to that chord. So, all you have to do is set them equal to each other. 2x plus 10 is equal to 4x minus 20. 30 is equal to 2x, so x is equal to 15. So, I want to know the measure of arc AB. AB is from here to here. So, 2 times 15 is 30, plus 10 is 40 degrees. And there you have it. This next one does not, this has nothing to do with perpendicular, just because it's below it. This is just three arcs. But if you look at the arcs closely, you have one from here to here, here to here, and here to here. So, you have three different arcs. So, what are you going to do? Well, since you don't have any chords or anything, you just have to remember the basic principle of circles is that their arcs always add up to 360 degrees. So to do this, all you have to do is add every arc, 4x plus 10 plus 3x plus 20 plus 3x plus 30, and set that equal to 360. And then you just have to simplify 10x plus 60 is equal to 360. 10x is equal to 300, which means x is equal to 30. So to find AB, you would just substitute 30 into 4 times x plus 10, which would give you 130 degrees. And BCA, that's from here all the way to here. Now you can plug it into both of those, or you can just be slick and think about the fact that a circle is always 360. So it's just 360 degrees minus whatever you're missing. So we already found that that's 130 degrees. We can just do 360 minus 130 and get 230. Or you could have plugged it in and solved for it that way. It really doesn't matter as long as you end up with the correct answer of 230 degrees. So we've got a couple more practice problems to work on on this page. Um, what I'm going to do really quick is just work on the second one with you, and then I'm going to have you pause the video and try the other three on your own. The reason why I'm skipping to this is because this is um, the perpendicular radius to a chord. What you have to remember is that a perpendicular radius and a chord will always bisect the chord and bisect the arc. So, if we know that BC is 5, that means AB is also going to be 5, which means AC, the full length of the chord, is going to be 10. Now, the measure of arc AD, well, if this whole piece from here to here is 300, And if a circle adds up to 360 degrees, we know we are missing 60 degrees. But I just want to know the measure of arc AD, so his answer is 30 degrees. All right? So actually what I want you to do is I just want you to do this example for now. Um, we'll, I'll go over one more with you after this. So pause the video and give it a try. So you might have found this one a little bit tricky because of the fact that here is AC, which means that we have that arc, AC. And then the other piece that you were told is congruent is chord BD, which means this arc is congruent. 
So what you noticed is x is in both of them. So that makes two different ways to solve this problem. Um, but what we're going to do is we're just going to say that this chord, or the green piece, would be 3x and x. So that's 4x, and that's equal to the entire blue chord and arc. That would be 2x plus 20. And then you're just going to go right ahead and solve, subtract 2x from both sides. You get 2x equals 20, so we know x is equal to 10. So now we're going to find arc AD. So to do that, what you needed to do is you needed to plug the 10 back in here. This is 30 degrees, and this is 10 degrees, and this guy over here is 30 degrees. So A to D is going to be 70 degrees. If you found this piece down here, um, that would have been too big of an arc. Okay, I know it, it looks like this would be the, the smaller arc, uh, but you always have to go with the actual measures. You never rely on just the pictures. Sometimes it's there to fool you. So 70 degrees would be your answer. Here you go. Um, these two, I'll show you how to do one more, and then you can go ahead and do the other one. So I want to find the length of AB. And all I know is I have a 90 degree angle here, and I know that the radius is actually 10. It's 6 from here to here and 4 from here to here. So how in the world is that going to help me find the length of AB? Well, you need to be clever in this situation. What you need to do is you need to draw in a radius to either A or B. It doesn't matter. Since we know that the entire radius is 10, Again, we can see that we have created a right triangle. So we have our right angle over here. We know that this is 6, and we know that this is 10. So basically what just happened is you're going to be able to find this length right here. We can call it x, double it, and you know that you found the length of the entire chord AB. So we're just going to do a little Pythagorean theorem here. x squared plus 6 squared is equal to 10 squared. So x squared is equal to 64, and x is equal to 8. So if this piece is 8, that means this is also 8, because a perpendicular radius will bisect that chord, which means AB is 16. So very similar here in the next problem is that I am giving you that the chord AB is 8, and I'm giving you the distance from the center to the chord is 3. And I would like you to find the diameter of this piece. And CD is actually supposed to be here. What is the length of CD? So go right ahead, pause the video, and give this a try. Let's see what you got. So we know that AB is 8. That would mean this is 4, and this is 4 once you split it. So the same thing we just did earlier, we would have to draw this in, make this our right angle, and you have a right triangle where you know this is 3 and this is 4. Pythagorean theorem, 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to x squared because we need to find the length of that radius. And that's going to give us 25 is equal to x squared, so x is equal to 5. So we know this is 5. So if the radius is 5, what is the length of the diameter? That would be 10. And the length of CD would also be 5 because it is a radius. And that's it for this video. Um, obviously, if you have any questions, be sure to ask. But all you have to do is make sure you just remember that Whenever you have a radius perpendicular or a radius and a chord intersecting, they're going to be perpendicular um, and bisecting. Um, and you always have to remember that arcs are going to add up to 360 degrees for a full circle. And a radius that is perpendicular to a chord will split that guy in half. Um, all sorts of little things happen when you have circles. So that's it for this video. This is Longo and I'm out. See you. Bye.